Uh, have, you, have you realized some things? You start singing. You can sing yourself happy. You can sing yourself in a place where you wasn't when you came in. You got to sing that nothing is impossible. I, I heard a lot of doubt when we first started singing it, but the more we sang it, nothing Because it's more than just a song. Nothing. And I was wondering while we were singing that song, I wonder how many of us was almost afraid to sing that one because we see some impossibilities in our own life right now. We see some impossibilities. Even though I know nothing is impossible. I didn't know that. But I also know that what makes all things possible also what knows what keeps things impossible. I do know that faith makes all things possible. And I know that doubt keeps things as impossible, impossible. <laughs> if we could just believe, people would come to Jesus and he'd say, it didn't matter how bad things were, he would say things like, can you believe? Can you believe? I, I, I realize that we are in a time when crisis hit every day. Everybody's got one. Seem to become in packs crisis. But did you know that there is not a crisis? that can't be covered by the Christ. You know, and I love, we, we make excuses for our lack of faith. And because we lack the faith, we have to make excuses for God. We do. Because if our faith gets small, we'll just turn around and say, well, you know, it ain't the will of God. But there are some things that he has stated is his will. I don't doubt those things. If he said it. See, I, but many times we have doubted our own self on things he has promised. See, God does not apologize for what he promises you. And you may apologize why you don't have it. He said, my word has went forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me. Boy. But it's going to accomplish wherever I send it. It's going to accomplish whatever I send it to accomplish. And I believe when he proclaims some things in his word, his word went out. And everything he said his word would do, it will do because it ain't coming back empty. Let me preach about five minutes and I'll let you go. I think we got, really, today is a real simple day. I want you to say with me, I will. You are reluctant to say that because you don't know what you will do. <laughs> See, I, I can feel you hesitating. I will. What, you will what? You don't just jump up and start saying, I will. I will what? 
Let's say it together. I will. I will. It wasn't scary there, was it? Well, some of you are still kind of scared. What am I willing to? Well, I, I, I would thank God, I will hope to God that you will to be here right now. Because that's a good start. And if you didn't will to be here right now, you probably going to like the rest of this. Because this is all about a will. In uh, the book of Proverbs 20 and 18, And in 20, Proverbs 2018, every purpose, every intention, every imagination, every invention, every plan. No, that's not on that. I'm just breaking that word down for you a little bit. Every purpose is established by counsel. And with good advice, make war. Every purpose has been established by counsel. One of the things we never want to get away from is good counseling. How many know we have a counselor? But I believe that after we have obtained counseling, advice, we didn't have to resolve or come up with a resolution. Once we have come to that resolution, it should come to two words. I will. I will. Should not be done without counsel. Brother William, have you ever been sucked into something that you really didn't get no counseling for? And you just kind of jumped in there. Ended up, you said you would, but you couldn't. So he said every, every purpose, every intention, every plan, make sure you sit down and get some good counseling with that. Make sure you didn't just, I willed into something that didn't have no counseling. Everybody say, I will. We're going to be saying that a lot probably. Precious God, I thank you for what you've already done. I appreciate your presence among us. And we know that you're here for the purpose of healing us all. Lord, I pray that thy word will come forth and heal all of us. Every sickness and every hurt and every pain. In Jesus' name we pray. As you'll see, it said, I will. Okay, there you go. I believe that it's so important for us. Especially, how, how many of y'all in here right now could say emphatically that I have a, I don't want you to say nothing though. I just want you to hear me, but answer inside. You got a made up mind. And you, you've already said I will no matter what. You already have seen your purpose. You understand your purpose. You've been counseled on the purpose. And after the purpose has come, you got one resolve. Either you is or you ain't. You will or you won't. 
I know a lot of us like to play the game of uncertainty. Because life puts us in a whole lot of places. The Bible calls them valleys of decisions. I don't know how many valleys you've had in yours, but I had a whole bunch of them in mine. I've come to a lot of valleys that I had to make decisions. I've been in some where, I mean, one time, my first one was I had just got in church. I came to my first valley. I never get the struggle I had because I kind of love God, but he put a lot of pressure on me. A whole lot of pressure. I had never been by myself in my life. I was by myself. All my friends had gone. All I had was a dog and a little boy. I'd never been in that situation. I, and I, I'm, it, it was hard. Let, let me just say this. I'm a social kind of guy. I like people. I, I remember it was Christmas Eve. That was one of the long, loneliest Christmas Eve I'd ever seen. Sleigh bells ringing was not doing nothing for me. Silent night, none of that. I'm sitting down here in this basement. I got all kinds of pressure on me. I don't want to be here by myself. I'm thinking about how everybody and their families, they're getting together, eating chitlins and things, and I ain't got nothing. I remember sitting there that night and having to make a decision. Because when I first got in church, I was saying, I'm, this is me the rest of my life. See, I hadn't been in those valleys yet. I, I didn't know you got saved and you'd be in some valleys. Because everybody I knew was faking me out. They act like they was walking on mountaintops. Woo! I wasn't having that experience. So one night, it came to this. I got to make a decision. Man, I was feeling like only man on earth. Nobody knows I'm here. I said, God, I know you're real. But you're just not touching me the way I want to be touched today. And I said, I know you're here, but you know, I'm not having no fun with you at all. Have you ever been with God and didn't have no fun? Thing, brother Bill. They scared it's the wrong thing. How many of y'all been saved and didn't have no fun while you were saved? But I'm almost scared. Don't be scared. I was having one of them days where I wasn't having no fun. So I told God, I said, look, Lord, I'm going to tell you what we're going to have to do today. I said, I realize you're my savior, but we need to call time out. Boy, it's getting so quiet here right now. Some of y'all on time out right now? Are you on time out? Okay. But I, call, I wanted to call time. I told God, I said, let me tell you something. Evidently, the reason I'm not having as much fun as everybody else is having they must have committed more sin to me because they got more joy. So what I need to do, I need to go and fill my cup up. Because it seemed like people who came back to God had more joy than those who were getting saved.
I'm telling you, they will come back. I've been sitting here suffering all the time I've been in church. They done went out three times and came back. And each time they came back, man, they just had so much joy. I'm saying. How is it? I've been sitting here struggling. They go out. Come back in about a month. Everybody's shouting with them and praying with them. And I'm sitting here in this valley trying to figure out why I'm not having fun. So I said, God, I think what I need to do. I'm, not, I'm being honest with you. See, I messed around, made a, a fatal mistake. I had left one of my leather jackets in the closet. One of my real jet jackets, you know what I'm saying? And I messed around and left a pair of my stacks. Yeah, I need to come on the floor out just a little bit. But I just got messed up because I got in church first thing I was done, combed my hair off, looked like Samson. So, but I got my stacks on, I put my jacket on. Have you ever tried to go against God and how nervous you get? You, you talking shaking? <laughs> Trying to pray and shake? To God, I'm going to go and get this. Now, now, I love you now. I still love you, but I need to come back and get some joy later. I never get that night as long as I live. One of the worst nights of my life. It ain't nothing like you know God is there and you know what he's doing. But you really don't want him to counsel you on this one. Huh? You really don't want him. You know he ain't saying what you say. I don't want to hear him counsel me. I'm just trying to tell him what I think should happen when I come back. I got in my car and I'll never forget. I said it for Thunderbird. I pulled up. It looking like a Mark IV. It was clean. It was clean. I was clean. Oh yeah, I was clean. I had what I call my little pimp jacket on. I was clean. But you know what I got? And I said, God, then I got nervous. As I got closer to the club, I got nervous. I said, now, God, if you don't want me to go in here tonight, you know what I think? You know what I like about God? I can preach anything and hit us all, ain't that something? If you don't want me to go in here, God, don't let my car start. How many of you know you let the car start? God, if it's not your will for me to go to the club, let me get stopped by the police. How many of you know the police didn't stop me? Y'all laughing, but I'm just telling you the truth. I never give a God. I, I love him so much today because of his mercy. I love him so much because even when I don't even have my will made up, he's got a will for me. I remember going down El Dorado Street, getting closer and scared all the time. Kept giving God a chance. Now, Lord, if you don't want me to go here, make it so I can't get out the car. Y'all laugh, but you know what? Y'all do some of the same old crazy stuff. 
Lord, if it's not your will, if it ain't your will for me to rob this bank, let, don't let my gun work. You know what happened? The police didn't stop me. The car started. No, I'm going to tell you what he done. I finally came to the intersection and the turning lane. And when I got in the turning lane, it's like he froze me up. I want to turn so bad. You don't know how bad I want to turn. And you know what he said to me in the intersection? What you going to tell them when you go in tonight? Are you going to tell them I wasn't good enough to keep you? I drove all around the lake, took the long way home crying. I get in the house, I'm crying. But that night I had to come to a place. That's one of the greatest tests of my life. I had to come to a place. I had to come to a place where the I will start working. Yeah, because it wasn't, he wasn't going to stop me. He not one time tried to stop me. It had to be me. He said, one of the things we need to realize, we got to get in our will, in our spirit. See, I, I, we'll, we can't make you dedicate your life to God. That's got to be in our will in you. We can't make you pray to Jesus. That's got to be an I will in you. I, 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 I can't tell you how to love God. I can't make you love God. That's got to be an I will in you. It says I will love him. And I will pray. And I will live. I will. Sometimes it's good. Because most people have purposes in their life that brings nothing but disappointment. And part of that reading is because they never got any counseling with it. Many today live in a house of disappointment because they fail to get good counseling. I wish I'd have knew a whole lot more before I started in life. I wish I could have had better counseling. But I didn't. But thanks be to God. Where there is no counsel, that's where people fail. See, God, safety net for disappointment failing and aborted purposes is that you must say I will. In Isaiah, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. Did you hear me? Wonderful Counselor means that there's no better counsel than Jesus himself. When I can't hear nothing else, I need to be able to hear him. A wonderful counselor means that God is a wonder worker. How many of y'all want to see God work a wonder? That means that God becomes a miracle worker. How many of y'all want to see a miracle? How many of y'all want to see extraordinary things in God? When you make him the wonderful counselor, you're going to see things you've never seen before. But part of the problem is with my willingness to submit myself to his will. When I take our will and submit that to his will, life becomes so great and awesome. When I begin to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy, when I can finally say, his will is my will, and my will becomes his will, 
I can go in the garden and pray to great drops of blood come from my face and still say, nevertheless, not my will. And I know how it is. I like relief and I like quick relief. I don't like nagging pains. I don't like nothing that stays longer than 30 minutes. Even sometimes company. But look here. I like a quick fix. Don't y'all? Don't y'all want y'all fixed yesterday instead of today? Don't you wish God would have fixed it all yesterday? Ain't he always a day late and dollar short? Huh? Yeah, it seems like it is. See? We, we just like Mary Martha and them. You know what they say? If you had have been here, then I understand that he ain't got to be there to be there. But, if, boy, if Jesus just would have showed up yesterday, he was. He showed up, but you couldn't see him because your mind was somewhere else. And so you didn't see him, but he was there when you thought he wasn't there. Man, Jesus, if you just been here yesterday, my brother, he, he, he died. But let me tell you something. God got bigger plans than what you're seeing. God got more glory to get than what you're trying to give him. You no, know, he said, I, 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 I purposely, God purposely, God purposely wait. God will wait until something dies. He'll wait till something starts stinking before he shows up. And you'll be still talking about, oh, if God would have just showed up. You know, I wish God would have showed up in my life when I was five years old. Who knows what I would have been right now? But he didn't. But guess what he done? When he showed up, he knew exactly what time, just where, he knew exactly what to do when he showed up. I don't know if he'd showed up at five, what I would have been, but it wasn't five years old. But when he did show up, I said the same thing that most of y'all said, man, I wish I would have had God when I was younger. No, you don't. You were glad you got him when you got him. I wouldn't trade nothing for my life. Oh, praise God. See what it is, many people don't want to say I will. First thing we got to get in our vocabulary, I will. Be obedient because you can't be obedient without saying I will. You, you remember Naaman? Here is guys, guy, he's the leper. Do you know how many times we have missed the I will all you had to do was agree with God. All you had to do was say amen to God, but it wasn't convenient for you. Remember the name of the boy had leprosy? He wanted to be healed. Let me just tell y'all something here today. God don't heal you like you want to be healed. He heals like only he can. Here is Naaman. Got leprosy. Got status. But he got leprosy. He got money. But he's sick. He got a bad chariot and a bad house. But he's sick. Matter of fact, he's so sick, can't nobody even hang out with him. If he come at your house and sat on your table, sat in your chair, you got to throw the chair away. So you know he ain't got no friends because everybody see him coming and they ain't going to open the door. Here comes the counsel of God. All you need to do is to dip seven times in a jar. I don't understand, Sister Tracy, why it is if we're sick 
and God sends the word and tells you how to get healed, why would you say no? This dude had the audacity to say no. I don't, I don't think it takes all that. You about as messed up as you can be. And you're sitting here talking about it don't take. I wouldn't, whatever it takes. Whatever. It, woo, if I've been messed up all my life, been messed up all my life, and somebody going to give me a word that's going to straighten me up. It don't take all this. Man, I wouldn't care what it takes. You know what happened? Well, well, this old boy told me, man, look. Now, if he'd have told you to go back home where everybody can see you and dip in one of them nice, pretty strings and stuff back home, you'd have been more than glad to do it. But he asked you to do one thing. Go dip in this water seven times. All you got to do, what have you lost? You can change your clothes. But the water's nasty. So what? You nasty. Oh, that water, it don't look like, I can't get in that. You've been in some mess worse than that water. Huh? You've been in a whole lot of stuff worse than the water you're going to get in to get baptized. Isn't it strange what, we, what turns us on and what turns us off? Isn't it strange is that if the word counsel came to you and said, what you need to repent, what are you going to say? Well, I, I really want as bad so and so now. I ain't, I ain't really got to do that much repenting. What did he say? Did he say if you did a little bit, teeny weeny bit? In the strange, I see. I've heard people almost go crazy. What I'm repenting for? You repent because you is a nasty sinner. You're repenting because you need salvation. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't feel like I need to do all that repenting. If he said repent, guess what you need to do? And guess what's going to happen if you don't? You ain't going nowhere with it. Do you see how simple that is? Many people today are wanting God to do things in their life. They, they won't take the counsel of God to get it done. They want God to heal their body, but they ain't done the first thing God told you to do. We want God to come in and bless us with all kind of money, but you ain't done what he told you to do. You're talking about being blessed, but you ain't done nothing to, to get into that, and you won't say I will to nothing he's telling you. How in the world do you think God can do all that for you, and you won't even say I will? Give me a few more minutes. Man, I heard people argue over the how to be baptized. But, well, I don't think I need to be baptized in Jesus. Well, if he says be baptized in his name, guess what he meant? You need to say, I will. Say, somebody said, I will. All right. See, he said, if you repent, be baptized, then he said, I'm going to feed you with the Holy Ghost. I've heard people say, I don't need the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to figure out what makes you different than everybody else. Why do you think you don't need it if he says you do? I believe if God says he's going to give me the Holy Ghost, I'm going to raise my hand. I will. If he's going to forgive my sin, I will. He want to heal my body, I will. Do whatever's necessary. But many of us, we argue, we fuss. Our will is not there. We're in that valley of decision. Not sure today, am I going to live? As we say, I'm going to live for God. And then we change our mind. I'm going to stay with God and we change our mind. No, we need to get one I will in our spirit 
that no matter what comes or go is that that I will is still in my heart. I may have to go through fire, rain, or whatever, but I got to keep that I will alive because I've made up my mind. It doesn't even matter. I've made up my mind. I'm going to put I will in my vocabulary, even though it does not always sit well with me, but I want to make sure that God knows I will. You say you won't help. I don't know how many times some people... They won't help. One man told me one time, I told him I was going to help him. I was going to give him some help. And he thought I was going to reach in my pocket, but I wasn't. He said he needed help. So I want to give him some help. I said, you know, Jesus want to save you. He said, oh, no, I, 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 don't want, I don't want it that bad. I don't want it that bad. What do you mean? You don't want it that bad. You said you wanted him. I offered you the greatest helper you're ever going to have. But you know what he said? I don't want it that bad. We're like Egyptians, want to sleep with the frogs one more night. If God says he wants to help you, will you let him help you? If you say, if God says he wants to heal you, will you let him heal you? Oh, hallelujah. See, part of our problem today is that it's time out. Time out. For the play and for the fake. We got to quit starting stuff that we can't finish. Every Sunday we start some stuff here and then we can't finish it. Some of us come in on it. We got caught up with it, but we didn't intend to finish it. Let me tell you something. If we don't intend to finish this thing, we need to quit clapping our hand and praising God. I ain't been ugly, but I'm just telling you. Because every time you clap your hands, you start in a war. Clap your hands. Oh! They said, shout with the voice of triumph. We ain't just clapping just to be clapping. We're not just praising God just to be making noise. I signed on to this army of I will. When I clap my hands, I'm not just clapping my hand. I'm clapping my hand because there is a triumph in my soul. I'm not just praising God just to make a bunch of racket. I found in the Bible where the Lord said he had put praise, the high praise in our mouth. And these high praises in our mouth is just not so we can shout over everybody else, but the high praise in, in my mouth is for my enemies. You cannot be a quiet saint in this. You're going to have to sooner or later declare who you are. you got to declare what you are. And you need to tell him, you know what, I'm going to clap, I'm going to praise, I'm going to sing because I am who I am. And God has given you some of the greatest weapons you ever had. And you don't tell me you've been fighting the devil with your mouth shut. Don't tell me your enemy been coming against you and you weren't praising God. Don't tell me that. I believe that if we live according to this book and we started doing what God tells us to do, I'm telling you, the gates of hell cannot prevail against what God has built. Hallelujah, we come. We don't realize. We got to because we don't have our will made up. We're thinking, some people thinking the devil can stop you because your will ain't made up. When my will is made up, amen, the devil came against Jesus, but he said one thing, not my will. All the way.
Let me tell you something. When you get your will made up, I ain't saying the devil won't come. He just come test to see if you got your mind made up. He just want to make sure you meant what you said last Sunday. You know what I'm saying? He just want to see how much did you believe what you said last Sunday. Okay, so you, you heard, what he's, heard what the message was last Sunday, didn't come out and test you. Did you believe that? Do you really believe God can help you this time? You remember you tried it before? Yeah, I tried it before, but what I didn't try before was I didn't have my mind really made up. Like today, when you got your mind made up, nothing will be able to stop you. Come on, play softly, man. Make them think I'm quitting. Sometimes we mistake so much in this. But I'm beginning to realize one thing. When God realizes he has your will, when he has your will, then it means he said you can ask anything according to my will and I'll do it. You, you know why that worked? See, Brother William, when my will gets sold out to his will, I'm only going to ask for the things that he will. But when you're not sold out and you, and you want to pervert the scriptures, you want to take that scripture and use it to get, you know, new shoes. Could I tell y'all, see, you really ain't got to pray about them shoes too much. All you got to do is have a job. We want to spend a lot of time praying about the shoes and everything else. And anything other than the fact, just trying to get his will. See, but when my will matches up with his, when I ask him anything according to his will, he'll do it. I said he'll do it. But he said, a double-minded man is unstable. So you see, it puts God in a real bad place. You're praying like you're playing hopscotch. One foot in, one foot out, whatever you're playing. But if I could ever get, I will. And get that matched up with his will. Then I'm going to ask him. I can ask him for anything. Because I no longer is living by my will anymore. Lady got so mad at me one time. Because you know, if we poor people, we want more money. Right? If we had a, if we had a chance today to stand and pray, I wonder how many of us will be praying some prayer like this. Lord, make me rich. Well, I ain't going to lie if he gave me a chance to ask. I will ask him. <laughs> but I believe that probably most of us in this house today, if we had to ask God for something, and we had to try to ask him according to his will. We would almost will him to make us rich. But I ain't lying. I don't think there'd be nothing bad about not worrying about bills. None of that. I, I believe, that, man, that, to me, that sounds so good. You ain't got no car notes, no house notes. You own the light company and the water company. And all you're doing is just living eating apple pie and ice cream, kicking back in the backyard, barbecuing on the grill, 
Ain't got no, got your private jet in the backyard. Don't that just sound like life? Tell the truth. Some of y'all done dreamed about it. Man, I wish I had a man so I didn't have to do nothing, go to work or nothing. Man. But God says, you know what I want? I want you to say I will. But I want you to say that I will to him. I, I, I want you to get your will hooked up with mine. Because I've already willed myself to you. I willed everything. That's what the new covenant was. It was a new will. So he said, I've already willed it to you. This is my covenant to you. This is my will to you. Can I tell you today, it's time for us to start a thinking about the victory we have, not the one we're going to get. It's time to start getting happy about the victory you already got. Because ain't nothing formed against you that's going to prosper, and not one thing going to be able to bring you down. I pray to God today that somebody here will just say, God, I will. God, I will. Here is Jacob. I'm closing for real. The things we'll do so that we don't have to face God. You Did you know all Jacob had to do was just go ahead and face God. He could have saved himself a lot of problems. Jacob was willing to divide, separate, do whatever it takes. Just so he wouldn't have to face God. You know, finally God got him down to where he had nothing else left. See, I'd rather see the face of God today than see the face of my enemy. Because if I can see the face of God today, he'll make my enemies my friend. Jacob done everything he could to keep from seeing the face of God. There's some of you here today, I hate to say this, but you'll do anything you could today. You'd rather do anything but face God today. Come on, stand with me. You need to make a choice. Sometimes it's hard to face God because we know if we face God, he probably going to really show us who we are, and that's just not good. He, he didn't want to face God because he knew who, who he was. And the Lord made him know that he knew who he was, said, you know, your name is Jacob. You ain't nothing but a liar, a supplanter, and a schemer. But since you came to see me, I'm not going to show you who you used to be. I'm going to show you who you are now. I wish somebody could leave this place today and know who they are. I wish somebody here that's not afraid to come and face God would come and face him. And don't worry about God rejecting because he ain't rejecting nobody. But he, I, I wish there's somebody here today who's tired of hiding behind who they are and afraid to face God. I wish today you say, I will today, God. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to tell me who I am. I want you to tell me who I was because now I need to know who I am. That's why we need to get right now into a place where that we can say, I will, God. Did you know facing God was nothing compared to facing Esau? The only thing happened to Jacob was that when he got through facing God, his whole walk changed. The Bible says that God dislodged him just a little bit where he didn't walk like he used to walk, but he had a limp then. 
had to slow down, but he knew how to trust God. Are we here today? Is somebody here right now? You know you need to trust God. You know you need to trust God. You got things in your life. You need to trust God right now. Come on. You need to say, I will. Lord, I will see you. I will come to you face to face. I will. I wish somebody today would step up and see and look into the face of Jesus and realize that everything you've been wanting is in his face. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to run anymore. You just need to say, I will. God bless you today. I will. Let the counsel of God speak to your heart right now. In Jesus' name, God bless you.